Hey guys, Ty Bryce here. And you know, a lot of people think that the first million dollars is the hardest, but in reality, it's not the first million because most people hear a million and they clock out. Not possible, I can't do it, whatever. I actually think the hardest is actually the first 10,000. This right here is the hardest. And I saved up $10,000 twice. The first time it took me six months and then less than a month to waste all the money. The second time it took me a little longer, but then I basically saved that money and didn't spend that money, invest that money. Now the reason I say the first 10,000 is a lot harder is because you know $10,000 is very possible. You know you can get there. And what it takes to save the first 10,000 can get you to a million and I'm halfway there to a million maybe a little bit over and what I did to get my first 10,000 got me my first hundred thousand got me my first 300 and then got me my first half a million and I'm on my way there but it's the same exact concept I don't think a thousand dollars is that good because to get to a thousand it's kind of like you get paid in one month, you made over a thousand dollars, right? So boom, you got it. But to get to ten thousand, it's a lot harder. And by the way, in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly my routine when it comes to whenever I get paid. Everybody has a routine, whether it's a morning routine, a gym routine, a makeup routine. I got a money routine. When I get paid money, I have a ritual. I have a habit. Some things I do with my money to make sure. I don't waste my money and to make sure my money makes me more money and that I'm going to have more money tomorrow. That's the idea. In this video, I'm going to share that with you and I want you guys to use these techniques I give you, which by the way are just three. They're very simple. I want you to use them to go ahead and save up your first 10,000. And if you get there and if you accept the challenge, comment down below. And when you get there, you DM me, you tell me, yo, Tommy, I got the 10,000 because I want to know if you got there, okay? And I know you can get there. And as always, guys, do me a favor, smash the like button, it helps a lot. And on top of that, also, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and get notified when I post a new video basically almost every single day. Now, the very first thing that I do with my money and my ritual is this, I have a baseline. My baseline is basically the amount of money I need to basically live a comfortable lifestyle and to be able to basically get to my goals or whatever it is. Now. Here's what I see and here's what I did. When I first started learning about money and budgeting and investing and passive income, you kind of learn everything at once because you kind of become obsessed with it like I am a nerd. And the idea was I wanted to be super crazy. I was like, yo, I'm not gonna eat lunch for three days. I'm gonna save all my money. That lasted about a week because then it was like too much and I basically was like, all right, this saving things is too hard. I rather save a little less money and get there comfortably and not have to stop. So basically, inside of your baseline, which is basically the amount of money you need to survive, you should have in there the things that make you happy, whether it's I wanna go out once a week to buy some food outside, I wanna get my Starbucks coffee every single day, I wanna get avocado toast, have those things inside so you're not tempted or you have to retract or grab some money from your savings here and there. Before you know it, you're not really doing anything. My point is make things comfortable. So when it comes to this baseline, it has four main expenses for me. The first one is basically shelter. That means your apartment or your mortgage. A very common rule is basically don't spend more than 33% of your monthly income when it comes to shelter. I know people that spend half their money on a fancy studio, a fancy apartment, and it's not even theirs. Like, you're just paying rent. Nothing wrong with paying rent, but the point is, live somewhere you can actually afford, all right? So that way you can basically live in your own home and actually own it later on in life. That's the idea. By the way, if you're a nose like I am, I spend $300 on my shelter. How? Because I basically bought my home, I own it, I don't have a mortgage on it, and I only pay someone to clean it and take care of it, and that's around $300 per month. So I got mines very, very low. Then you have, for example, utilities. Utilities to me are not just, for example, your light bill, your gas bill, your internet bill, your phone bill, but it's also things that are basically utilized by you that are important. That means, for example, your healthcare. Also, for example, your gym bill. Those things to me are also utilities because basically I need them and they help me out in some way. So I add them up here. And for me, total amount here is around 300. <clears throat> If I'm mistaken here, $313.75. I know people that basically just their gym membership 
is over $200, $300. Don't be an idiot. If you have utilities like a expensive phone bill, expensive internet bill, call in those companies and figure out, hey, I want to lower my plan. I want to negotiate. Try to lower those bills as low as possible to save a lot of money. All right. And then you have, thirdly, your groceries. People try to save money here. I don't really like that because I don't want to live off ramen and noodles like all those movies say. I want to have a healthy diet because if I eat like trash today, I'm going to pay for it later on with my health care and all that stuff, okay? So, no. I spent around $300 when it comes to per month on food. It used to be $200, but after inflation, it kind of hit up a little bit more. So, around $300, bucks, i do not really eat out whatsoever. I do meal preps, and I eat exactly what I want to eat and what I like to eat, all right? So, $300 for me is a great budget. And then lastly, you have transportation, and that basically means your car, everything that goes into that car, or whether you take, for example, public transportation. For me, my car is the sexiest, best car in the world because it's paid off. So I only have to pay, for example, to get it washed and also to get gas in it. And since it has great mileage, I basically only spend around $76.67 a month, including insurance that I pay once a year. So in total, when you look at my baseline, it basically means, hey, whenever I get paid, all I got to do is take around $1,005.42 a month. And I know with this money, I can basically live and I can be basically fine. One strategy is have a separate account for your baseline money. So when you basically get paid, you get your paycheck, you grab that money and you have a separate place to basically put it. So you're not tempted to use that money for something else. You know that, hey, this is my baseline. The money I'm going to use for X, 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 that does not sound well, but it's the money you're going to use for living a comfortable life, okay? Not luxurious, but comfortable. A frugal, nice life you actually enjoy. Second thing is, okay, when it comes to, if you have your baseline and you have your income, you're supposed to have money left over. If you don't have money left over, then obviously you're spending way too much or you don't make enough. And that means basically you have to either earn more money via side hustles, be they're asking for a raise or via changing jobs. Or for example, you're spending way too much money. So when you're trying to save money, don't save money in the middle, like utilities and groceries. No, save money on the both high and end points. Meaning, hey, your rent or mortgage, that's the most expensive thing ever. So save money up here or your car. If you have a car that's super expensive, you're paying a loan on it, sell that thing, get rid of it. Those is where basically the most money comes out of it. Those two main things, the top and the bottom, not the middle, not your grocery bill. I'm not going to get some Starbucks today. Not the I'm saving money on my electricity bill. No, it's the top and the bottom, the shelter and the transportation. People spend the most money there. So save money up there. That's the best thing to do. Buy a used car, buy a hoopty, use that car, and then get something more reliable later on. That's the idea. So you want to have goals with the extra money you have left over. And you have long-term goals and you have short-term goals. Short-term goals are goals you basically got to hit in five years or less. Long-term goals are five or more years, obviously. Okay, so simple. There's just three here. Your first goal is short term, be debt free in less than five years. Make that a goal. So if you owe, let's say, for example, a ton of money, let's say you owe, for example, let's say I have debt. I have student loan debt. I have credit card debt. I have personal loan debt. Let's say in total, I owe $30,000, right? Make it a goal to pay it off in less than five years. Five years is basically divided by 60 per month. That's basically around $500 a month you're going to be putting towards your debt. How do you pay the debt off? Don't pay the debt based on the amount you owe, pay it based on the interest rate. If somebody is charging you, for example, a high interest rate, pay the highest one first. That way you save the most money. That's your first goal because once you eliminate the debt, what do you have? You have extra money that you can use for something else and you have less friction because you don't have to worry about paying other people anymore. That's why that's your first goal to become debt free. Everything except the mortgage though, because the mortgage is massive and it's super expensive and you're not gonna pay it off like in five years, obviously. So just the short term stuff like student loan debt, some personal loan debt, car loans and all that stuff and credit card debt and all that stuff goes to short term debt that you wanna pay off. So basically, if you spend 70% of your baseline, use the other 30% to pay off that debt and to complete that first goal. Second goal should be save up for emergencies. 
What's your baseline? Did you calculate it? Go calculate it right now, pause this video. And once you get your baseline, multiply it by three. So if my baseline, personal baseline is $1,005 and again, um, 42 cents, I'm gonna grab that money, multiply it by three, and save up three months worth of emergencies. And that way, if something happens to me, I lose my job, whatever, I have three months to basically cover all of my bills. If you wanna do six months, obviously, um, that's gonna be times six, so that's gonna be $6,000. If you wanna save up six months, for example, that's gonna be, again, somewhere around $12,000. But again, this is my baseline. Your baseline might seem a lot more different. It might be 3,000, might be 4,000, might be 2,000, might be 6,000. It all depends on basically how much money you spend. My recommendation is make sure your baseline is no more than 70% of your income. If it's 90%, that's like on the edge, it's kind of crazy. You want to save more money. That's the idea. Spend less money. Get to your goal a lot faster. That's the whole thing. Now, that's the main goal. So you have pay off debt, save for emergencies. The third goal is, is two in one. It's the only long-term goal here. It's basically invest money into an index fund for your retirement so that way you can basically have money when you're older because you're gonna need money in the future and also for passive income. And then while you're doing that, save up money to buy a home. My rule when I'm buying a home is I use the 33% rule on a 15 year mortgage. And what that means is the home I buy is no more than a third of my monthly income as far as, for example, all the expenses like the um, actual mortgage, interest and capital payments, the insurance, the taxes, everything in that home basically no more than a third of my monthly income, obviously not including utilities, that's the idea. And then you set it on a 15 year mortgage. This limits you to an inexpensive home compared to everybody else who's gonna basically a 30 year mortgage and getting a larger lump sum of cash, okay? So by doing this, you get a smaller home, you're able to pay it off in 15 years. And once you add this into your budget, because now you're not paying rent anymore, and now you have to pay, for example, for your mortgage, well, now that becomes a part of your baseline, right? So you should still have money left over. With that leftover money, once you're done investing 10 to 20% into, into your retirement fund, use the rest of the money to basically just basically try to pay off the mortgage faster. So you're doing two things at the same time. That's the only time you do two things at the same time. You're investing, and you're also paying off your mortgage faster. And if you do both of these things at the same time, you're going to be done with your mortgage on average in 10 years to 15 years. And in 10 to 15 years, since you've been investing 10, 20% into your retirement account, you're also going to have a good amount of money. And once those 10, 15 years pass, what do you have? You have a lower baseline. So now you have to spend less money to basically live. And that's cool because with all that extra money, you can use it for fun, giving, or whatever you wanna do with it, invest more, make more money, whatever, but you got more options. So what does this look like, Tommy, in real life? Like when I actually get paid, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, the idea is for simplicity's sake, okay? Let's say you get paid right here like $100. This is basically all the cash I have available to me right now because I basically don't have any cash at all. Let's say, for example, you get paid uh, $100 a month just for simplicity's sake here. If your baseline is 70%, obviously, that's going to be $70. So the minute you get paid, you grab $70. You got one, and you got two, and you got three, and then basically you grab a 10. That's basically $70. People say, for example, no, invest first, and then you spend, no, because if you invest first, and then you need money to live, then where are you gonna get that money from? You're gonna have to dip into your investments. And that's why I say, don't invest until you're done with your debt stuff and also your emergency fund stuff, okay? Because it makes no sense. So $70, that goes aside. And if you have left, for example, $30, right? Um, you can say, hey, my first goal is to pay off debt. So grab all this money, put it towards the debt. Use it in the avalanche method, pay the debt with the highest interest first. Once you're done with that goal, again, your baseline is still the same, 70%. By the way, if you get a raise at your, at your job, you don't increase your baseline. You keep the same baseline and you use the extra money towards your goals. Second is, you save up for your emergency account. So when you get paid, again, 70 goes into my baseline, the other 30 goes towards completing this goal. And then again, once you're done with that, you got six months worth or three months worth in there, you grab that money and you put it towards what? You put it towards 10, 20% towards your investments, which is gonna be, for example, again, 20 bucks for investing, 10% towards saving off my mortgage. That's the idea. Once I get the house I want, again, $20 goes into my investments, 
$10 I pay extra towards my mortgage. And you keep doing this. It's very simple. It's not complicated. I don't want it to be crazy stuff because the more complicated it is, the more difficult it is. Okay, so you got one, your baseline, two, your goals, and three, you put it into action every time you get paid. That's it. That's the idea. Whether you get paid weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, doesn't matter. This is all you have to do. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you out a lot. I hope it makes sense. If it does make sense, comment down below, let me know, and say sense so I know you watched until this point of the video. And if you have questions, don't be hesitating to comment down below and let me know the question because that way I can answer it to you ASAP. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell, get notified, and comment down below. And follow me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And up here is another video, and over here is my face. Click subscribe. And as always, long-term team officially out.